Welcome to Gerstel's LabWorks True Podcast, the show about analytical chemistry, interesting instruments, and the challenging analytical problems that they solve. Hi, and welcome to Gerstel's LabWorks Podcast, where we talk about interesting stories in analytical chemistry, problems, and how we solve them. Uh, I'm Kurt Thaxton. I am the product manager for thermal desorption here at Gerstel, and I'm joined with my co-host, Jan Garbe-Emmel. Jan, say hi. Hello. Um, yeah, so very warm welcome here from the headquarter in Mülheim an der Ruhr, Germany. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Jan. Good, good, good to be together again. Today we have a we have a special guest. Uh, we have Damien Steyer is here, um, and Damien's going to talk to us today about a lot of interesting things. But uh, rather than me tell you what those things, we have Damien right here. Damien, uh, how how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so hi, Kurt. Hi, Jan. Uh, I am Damien Steyer. Uh, um, the CEO of Twist Aroma. Twist Aroma is a small company I created uh, 11 years ago uh, after my PhD on wine aroma. And um, now we are using uh, Gestalt Project to profile different kinds of uh, beverages uh, using uh, SBSC GCMS, for example. Damien, where, where have you started your, your career in, in the university? Which university have you have been? I was in the University of Strasbourg and I did my PhD in the INRA. Uh, INRA is the uh, Institut National de Recherche Agronomique, which is more or less <laughs> a National Institute of Agronomical Research in France. Uh, I did my PhD in enology. And um, the first day I was in the in the university, in this uh, in this uh, institute, um, they asked me to uh, develop uh, a dedicated um, screening project for aroma profile in wine. I use it to develop the screening of uh, volatile compounds in wine, and thanks the SBSC, I was able to do my PhD and uh, and obtain the, the the diploma, and then after the PhD, I created Twist Aroma because the uh, protocol I developed during my PhD was uh, good enough to to propose to different kind of industry, uh, especially the brewing industry and the wine industry. And now um, in the company, we use the the SBC protocol to profile every kind of uh, volatile profile in uh, uh, different kind of matrix. So as I'm, am I right when I say you jump directly from the university to be uh, to, to form a company and, and jump into the uh, adventure of uh, being company owner, uh, spending money for something and earning some money and, and so on. So not is that right? You're right. I created my PhD just before I obtained the diploma. <laughs> Great. So wow. It was, it yeah, was yeah, a big that, that's, pretty, that's pretty brave. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, what I, I thought I can, about, only, yeah. I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, when you me. say you profile aromas, <laughs> sorry, Bob, but when you say you profile aromas, are, so are, you're also like, do you have an ODP port at the other end? Are you characterizing the sensory side of it too? Or are you just strictly no. the, the GCMS data? <laughs> No, we, we do not have an uh, ODP um, uh, in, in, the, in the institute. We only have an uh, MPS and a GCMS. And uh, ah. uh, without, without the thermodesorber uh, unit, it meant that I used the SBSC in the liquid desorption part, in the liquid desorption ah. protocol. And the aim of the, um, of the PhD was to find uh, volatile produced by yeast. But mm -hmm. it was not aroma specifically. It was more um, metabolical, uh, dedicated part. I mean, I mean, we, we were interested in the way of the production of this kind of volatile compounds by, yeast. and this is why uh, I need at this time I need um, a versatile uh, technique to have uh, a lot of. Uh, 
So Dan, the liquid extraction of Twister, I mean, I'm familiar with it. It's I've heard of it, but I'm I've never run one that way. I've always been doing the thermal desorption of them. So, so what do you what do you extract that with, and how much are you injecting, and how how does that work? How does the actual sample process look? Um, the, um, the liquid extraction works with uh, acetonitrile. Uh, the aim was to extract mm, uh, a lot of compounds trapped in the twister and to inject uh, a little bit, uh, a small part of the, of the liquid desorption, of the, of the liquid extraction. It means that we only inject one microliter of acetonitrile because we have a, um, an SSL injector. So it means that we cannot mm. inject more than one microliter. Uh, but uh, we have to have at least um, the level needed to uh, cover the, the twister. And the, the minimum you have to, to put to cover the, the twister is uh, 100 microliter. So we put the twister in a, in, in a small microvial. We cover the twister with a 100 microliter of uh, acetonitrile, and we put the, the the tube into the ultrasonic bath during 30 minutes. Oh. Then we remove we remove the the twister and we inject one microliter of the of the extraction into the GCMS. But of course, we only um, see one percent, one microliter of on. The, one microliter on the 100 microliter. So it means we, we can only see 1% of the total volatile uh, products which are trapped in the twister. Mm -hmm. But it was still enough for me uh, to do my PhD on the on aroma profile in wine. Now, well, that's really neat. Um, now, the next side of this, and because I, mean, I had this experience, I used to do... Um, off odors and orange juice and milk with Twister. So I'm familiar with the, the challenges. Um, so what happens next? You get these chromatograms and they're going to be very complicated. There'll be 50, 100, 500 peaks in there. So, so how, what does the data side of this look like? You're, you're, you're taking a beverage like wine, running Twister in it, looking at volatile, getting these chromatograms. How do you, how do you take all of that and get a decision out of it? I mean, or, or get a, or get a, a piece of knowledge out? Out of it. How, do, how does that happen? Uh, at this time, it was 13 years ago. I, uh, um, the game game station <laughs> software, uh, but with the game station <laughs> software, I only have the tick profile. It means that I missed a lot of uh, compounds. So you, 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 you were speaking about. Uh, 100 uh, peaks, but for me, it was not 100 peaks. It was more um, like uh, 30, 40 peaks, but it was enough for me because uh, Still, it that's was a lot. The, the, the big one. So uh, I, I used the ChemStation um, uh, profile and put all the file together and put the file in a dedicated micro uh, I developed using Excel. To check if the peak, if the identity of each molecule uh, is in the right place, in the right retention index. Mm. And then if it was the case, I validated the peaks and say, okay, the, 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 the mass spectra is okay. The retention index is okay. So it means that the peak is in the right place. And I'm still, I, I am confident with the, with the, with the identity of the peak. And then I use the area. Wow. Of the peak to do comparison of uh, of wine. That that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so thirteen years ago, that's that that's about the time frame that I was still doing all this stuff actively. I used to use ChemStation and Enviroquant to do the same thing, um, and it was not the best tool for that. I think things have changed since then. What are you doing now to crank through all this data? Because hopefully, you're not still using a macro in Excel. But on the other hand, honestly, <laughs> there's not a lot of alternatives out there either. So now I'm using uh, unknown analysis to uh, to do deconvolution and obtain uh, a huge uh -huh. file because I use also the thermodesorber unit. So uh, for wine, wine, I obtain more or less uh, 400 and 400, 400 uh, compounds 
and uh, because because of the deconvolution, but also because of course because of the thermal units. Okay, when 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 you're when when you're thinking about the past, so your 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 time at the university and the time now, what? What what happens with you with your company in this time? So um, that it sounds that that there is something more uh, or some some more instruments are there and some more people are there. So can you tell us something about that? What happens um, from your company side over this time before we come back to the actual analytics? Um, um, to compare. To compare the the, the, uh, the time when I was in university and now, uh, what I can say, uh, I'm a CEO of a company. We are five, six person in the in the company, and then we we have now uh, two GCMS, uh, one GCMS uh, Simple Quad, one GCMS uh, Tough. It is a BT Tough. Mm -hmm. um, we have at least we have, we have. Two MPS um, equipped with a thermal disorder unit, um, and we also have uh, one workstation, which is also a Gerta. And um, then mm. the 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 most different uh, parts between the university and now is that I, I have to to make money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't. Yeah. I can't just no, research <laughs> ju ju just for the for the fun. I have to. It's publishing is not uh, is not a, a, a name. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to make money, so I have to find a new solution uh, to innovate to propose uh, something new uh, to our customer. Yeah. And w w when you are thinking about your golden customer, uh, we. we Which kind of customer is that? Is it uh, brewing? Is it uh, wine? Is it aroma? Or, or what, 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 is, what is your customer base? Or, and, and what is your golden customer? Um, the golden customer, has, um, uh, mo most of them are in the beverage industry. Uh, wine or beer. Uh, It is also because uh, we are in um, in, the, in the area in France where we have a lot of brewery and a lot of winery. So it's not so complicated mm -hmm. to find customers in this place. Mm -hmm. And because I did my PhD on wine, uh, I'm more or less like an expert in this topic in in the in this region in this area. So what are the, what are your customers coming to you with? I mean, so the, the one that always sticks out to me, but that's only because I did the work, um, was, you know, off flavor. So we would get people complain about milk that tastes like grass. Okay. So we have to figure out why it tastes like grass. It ends up being hexanol being the cause. Now, it's easy that hexanol makes it taste like grass. The question is, where does the hexanol come from? That's a whole different set of problems. <laughs> but so, so when they come to you, Are, are they coming to you with like production issues? Like, hey, my, I've got like that classic Band-Aid taste in wine, which of course comes from uh, Britannomyces. So uh, are they coming to you with production off flavor issues or is it more of a, I want to know what a Cabernet's profile looks like compared to something else or what kind of work, do, what kind of the things are your customers interested in? Mm, most of them would like to find What is the uh, signature? What is the pattern of the of their product? Say, okay, my product is different because I've got this kind of molecule. Of course, they come also to find off flavor, but also to find a uh, uh, quality marker. And uh, for example, oh. I, uh, in the in the hop company, uh, we've got we've got a hop, a hop company in Alsace here. Uh, we are more or less the, the only area uh, of uh, hop producers. And they would like to find why they, their hop are specific and are uh, unique to make beer. So they would like to find the pattern and uh, to, to, to say to the brewery, to the brewers, that their hop is unique. And if they're used, This hop, they will have a unique pattern, a unique flavor. 
For example, we worked on a, a hop which is called Barbe Rouge, red beer, red beer, sorry. And um, this hop um, has some um, dedic- some specific flavor, uh, like uh, red berry, like strawberry. And they mm. would like to know why and what is this kind of compounds. And then during this study, for example, we use ODP to find these compounds and say, okay, this compound is unique in this uh, variety of hope. And these compounds give the, the unique flavor because it, it, it is responsible of the, of the strawberry flavor you can smell. And for the hope producer, it's very important mm. to communicate on the on this kind of molecule to say it's not it's not just a smell it's also uh, real it's also proved by scientific point of view and by scientific uh, machine like CNS for example. So the hop producers are oh. uh, your customers for example to 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 identify their unique their their, their selling points their, their unique selling points to say yes that's that's why our hop is the best one for whatever A B or C. Yes, but but um, there is also a new uh, another interest to this kind of profile. Uh, for example, um, th- there is a um, it could be it could be that the the hope you are using the hope you are uh, putting in, into the into the field uh, have some problem to be um, uh, to, to be used to to grow. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the hop has some problem to grow, and they then they have to exchange the variety by a, another one, which is more resistant to uh, disease. Mm-hmm. If I come, if Twistarma come and say, "Okay, you you have a different kind of variety which uh, we screened, and we are able to say, "Okay, this variety has this kind of uh, profile, but this variety has a problem." Uh, this variety is not resistant to the disease, but this one is resistant and has the same profile, the same volatile profile. So you can exchange mm-hmm. this variety by another one and keep, and you can keep the volatile profile you want. And the brewer, the brewer is okay because we've got the, the, the same patterns, the same mm-hmm. volatile compounds mm-hmm. in the hop. So it makes sense for the hop producer to have this kind of, of information. Really interesting, yeah, and and, and really challenging uh, no. for for the producers to to get the right the right answer. And uh, yes, I think with your equipment and your knowledge, that's that's exactly the way to go. And for example, we we can do the same with the yeast. Okay. We can we can profile the volatile produ- the volatile compounds produced by yeast, and uh, uh, we can use this yeast and exchange this yeast by another one and produce exactly the same. Volatile profile, and this could this could be also uh, useful for the yeast producer, and we'd like to do that also for the barley. Okay, mm, that would make sense. So, so you're screening like you're looking at raw incoming barley, yeast, wheat, uh, hops, etc. But um, a lot of that volatile profile is going to change though with the fermentation. So are, are you also you know, doing like small scale fermentation there and uh, in the lab, trying to get to these other volatiles, or how does that work out? Hey, you're you're laughing. There's got to be a good story here. There's got to be something cute. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You're right. Um, I did a lot of micro fermentation during my PhD. So um, for me, when I when I used uh, Gestalt projects, uh, I always think about a way to uh, transfer the micro fermentation I did manually to uh, a robotic uh, experiment. Uh, for me, it was very important to, um, to be reproducible when I did my micro fermentation. Mm-hmm. So um, last year, we, 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 um, we imagine, we think about a way to produce beer and to ferment beer using a small vial and using uh, the incubator to uh, do the brewing parts. The incubator is very, very interesting for um, to, to, to do the brewing part because we can control precisely 
the, the degrees, the temperatures, and also the increase, mm. and also the, 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 the plateau. So uh, thanks to the software, we, we program all the, pro- all the, the, um, all the, um, uh, the temperature for, uh, for the brewing parts. So I, I I don't know if you are familiar with the brewing part, but uh, there is a lot of different kind of temperature which has to be uh, respected to to yes mm-hmm. to to increase to decrease to 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 maintain during mm-hmm. a certain time mm-hmm. because you have to um, to um, uh, to use the uh, amylase to transform the maltose to glucose, and the amylase works only at a, 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 a temperature. It means, for example, at uh, seven two degrees, uh, we have to we have to left the the, the vial the the, the world at seven two degrees during twenty minutes, for example, to to uh, have uh, an amylase uh, which can work perfectly. <laughs> so, using the incubator, it was easy to program all of these steps and obtain at the end of the brewing part a world. So. The, um, the first part of the, um, of this, uh, experiment was to put the barley, to put the water and say to the machine to do the brewing part in the incubator. And at the end, we obtain, uh, a rod in the vial. But also we have the, I think it's called the, the, the mash. Am I right, Jan? Mm-hmm. The, the mash or the, uh, the waste, the waste of the barley. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then we, we have yeah. the we have yeah, we have the words in the first part and uh, um in the bottom of the vial we have the um, the barley, the waste of the barley. Then we just have to uh let the vial uh cooling down, remove the words to a new vial, and put the yeast inside the vial and let the fermentation uh do yes yes let the fermentation mm-hmm. and to to um to keep the fermentation the fermentation is a, a a biological process it means that we have to control the temperature and then to, to control the temperature we use the the cooling rack of the of the mps so it means that the, the vial is in the cooling rack and as you know, during the fermentation, there is a production of CO2. Mm-hmm. To avoid the explosion yes. of the vial, we remove the CO2 uh, every two hours using the eight space syringe. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. This, so, okay, wait a minute. This is amazing to me. Let's stop for a second and back up. You are using an MBS robotic to make beer. I mean, yes, granted, you're right. not making a can of beer. <laughs> it's going to be kind of small, but so, I, I know breweries. That's pretty darn cool. I know I mean, micro breweries, and now I'm I know what what is it called? Micro micro or whatever. Nano brewery. He's a nano brewery. Nano brewery. I think we should establish that's that a new one in our uh, office. It's totally new to me. <laughs> oh, I think so too. I I did that. It's, it's it's only ten milliliters, so it's not it's not huge. <laughs> but when you have enough, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, great. And then this brings up this brings up lots of great ideas. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. The, the the aim was to to study the the production of um, I mean it means the aim was to to uh, to study the 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 volatile profile of hop but in the beer not in the raw material mm-hmm. because if you if you mm-hmm. profile a hop uh, directly into the gcms using spme for example uh, you have a lot of compounds but these compounds are not uh, present in the in the beer at the end yeah. because yeah. there is fermentation because there is a brewing part this is why i'd like to mm-hmm. develop this protocol to study um hope influence in the beer and and it works it it works very good so so we we, we can we can put the hop 
uh, at the end of the brewing part and let the fermentation and take the vial at the end and put into uh, the, 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 the GCMS for, for doing uh, SPME or SBSC if you want, and then obtain different kind of profile uh, for every hop we, we, we used. It works very good. Crazy. I love it. I'm curious. Have you looked at, have you looked into a uh, thin film spemi yet? I mean, if you're, you're doing a lot of twister, I mean, we've been doing some work lately with thin film spemi in addition to twister. We don't replace it. We add it in and we do them both simultaneously. Uh, if, you, if you haven't done, if you haven't looked into that, that would might extend your range into some of the more polar stuff. If that's of interest to you, it may not be. Uh, we, we, we use the TFSPME. We try to use the TFSPME, but at the moment it's not um, as good as the Twister. And uh, the the aim of the um, the aim of the of, of this experiment was to uh, to obtain a lot of compounds, a lot of polar compounds and uh, apolar compounds. And for with, with the Twister, it, it's enough. It's enough at the moment, but. I'm sure we have to improve the protocol uh, using the TFSP. I mean, but for the moment, it's not uh, it's not yeah. uh, the, the way we, we we used to. Now you're not limited to beer, though, right? I mean, you've done this fermenting of beer on an MPS robotic, but you could just as easily be looking at wine. I mean, I, I assume, or maybe you're already doing that. Are you? We, um, I would like to do uh, this. But uh, this uh, fermentation um, uh, in a, in a MPS using MPS, uh, but at the moment um, we 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 focus our um, our development on beer because it was um, uh, more complicated to produce beer than wine using uh, MPS yeah. because uh, doing That's wine true. is. It's, it's more or less just just put the words on the on the vial and put the uh, the yeast and that's it. Yeah. But for the beer, it yeah. was very complicated and um, uh, it's um, it's it, it was it was more challenging to do to do beer. So it means that if we are able to to do beer, um, wine will be not obvious but more easy uh, easier. Sorry. Simpler, yeah. The well, at least the process of fermenting it will be easier. The data, it, it all comes back down the data reduction in the end, though. Like you said, it, using unknowns analysis and trying to make sense of all of that data. It, it, it's amazing to me, uh, just from the aroma stuff that I've done in my in my time, just how complicated all that is. And uh, and if you're using an ODP port, um, it's also it can be sensitive to the person doing the ODP as well. We uh, we used to have a there was a woman in our lab uh, that we had to do most of our ODP work because she was just picky. <laughs> her nose was very good, so uh, so it's it's always somewhat data, it's also somewhat analyst dependent. But you have the GCMS data to back you up. That's that's pretty cool. So yeah, that, I, I, I'm still kind of in shock. You're using a robotic MPS robotic to make beer. Yeah, that's. And- this is definitely one of these things I've learned from this episode uh, of, of this podcast that I have to configure an MPS in our headquarter to produce beer there. <laughs> so that's that's my learning for today. Gone. <laughs> and we, Damien, we, I think we, have, do this we have to discuss we, we, the, 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 yeah. um, the configuration later on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds so crazy and great. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah, when we think about so, learning, yeah, so, so yeah, Kurt. No, no, go ahead. No, when we think about learnings, uh, then um, what can can our audience can can learn from from your experience? So, uh, what what is the, the the message you can get out to the world um, in in your in yeah in your environment in your beverage industry? So, what can they learn from you? Um. They, they can learn that uh, in Twister Arma we are able to do beer, but that's obvious. <laughs> that's what we have heard. <laughs> but, uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> no, we are we are also able to um, to identify uh, compounds which which are unique in the in the product, but also which are bad in the product. We we have um, a big database 
uh, with more like uh, 20,000 volatile compounds description. It means if we, if we click on the volatile compounds, we have the, the retention index in DB wax, in DB5, but also all the description, uh, of the, um, of the sensory attributes of the, of the compounds. It means that uh, if you click on uh, linalol, you will have a floral. Um, and uh, if you click on the, on the trans two non linalol, uh, you will have cardboard X and so on mm -hmm. and so on. You, 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 uh, uh, yeah. but we are able also to, um, to say, okay, uh, let me check what kind of molecule give this kind of aroma. For example, typically for grass, uh, aroma, we just have to click on grass and obtain the list of all the molecules uh, which have this kind of uh, sensory description. Uh, this is also very important, and uh, this this is easier for for us to um, find the right technique mm -hmm. to profile the product when we have this kind of question. For example, if we have um, Last year, we have a question about the fishy aroma. And we know that fishy mm -hmm. aroma is um, more or less there is a lot of molecule, but uh, we were quite sure that this was uh, the 3 ethyl amine. And then we know, we know that 3 ethyl amine cannot be seen uh, by uh, the twister. We have to use SPME. And we know how to configure the GCMS to see this kind of molecule. So thanks to the database, yeah. we, we, we are able to find the, the, the right technique for, for, for the right question and, 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 and give the right answer. So this was your database? I mean, that, that's a lot of work. There's a lot of compounds and you had to put all the sensory, sensory stuff into it too. You guys built, I mean, you're not alone that way. You're not the first person who said that, but you're probably the first person who did it in a shorter period of time as you have. I, you know, so a lot of the people we work with at the big flavor houses, for example, they have, they, they have these same databases, but, you know, they've been Simrise and people like that have been working on this for 50 years. <laughs> so, so it's, it's you've you come a long way in a short period of time. That's pretty impressive. Um, yes, I, I did that during my PhD because I read a lot of paper. And uh, as you know, wine is uh, very complex and very rich in, uh, different kind of uh, aroma and i mm. was exhausted to uh, to uh, look at the description of uh, of each molecule and and don't remember the description of this molecule 2 months uh, after i did this uh, first research this is why i put all of the mm -hmm. data uh, i can read on the volatile description uh, in into an excel file and then i um we, we we use we we develop our own database uh, on uh, SQL uh, to manage all of this data and uh, and be sure that we 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 are able to 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 find the right description for the for the right uh, volatile compounds. Okay. I think I read more than two thousand uh, papers to to build this uh, database. And we also have the, um, the perception thresholds in different kind of uh, metrics. It means that we, we can, we are able to, to, to say, uh, these kind of compounds. For well, these kind of compounds, we have the perception threshold in wine, but also in uh, water and also in beer. And sometimes it's very different. Wow. Oh, yeah. It always, it always is very metrics dependent. So, so uh, out of curiosity, uh, analytic is coming up here in, uh, in, in June, are you going to be there or where are we going to find you out in the world soon? Are you going into good conferences? <laughs> anything, we sh anything, we sh I mean, the stuff you do is interesting. So whatever you're going to, I want to go. <laughs> where, where, where are you headed next? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, at the moment, it's, there isn't any con Congress for me, uh, because, uh, uh uh, I'm waiting a child, not me, but <laughs> my wife. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. So, so for the moment, it's not possible. Uh, but uh, one of my colleagues will be in, uh, in uh, Luga in uh, July to present. Uh, we, we call that the micro fermentation production of beer uh, using MPS. Oh. 
Okay. Uh, Luga is in Spain uh, and uh, it's a uh, congress dedicated to uh, hop flavor. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. we are also, I, I think if you, the, the next congress I will, I, will, uh, I will do will be uh, the SBAC technical meeting organized by David Benanou. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think yep. it will be in Paris. Um, Maybe next year, but I'm I'm not sure for the moment. Yeah, yeah, we're still coming out of the whole COVID mess. It's starting to it, it finally unraveling, and we're getting we're actually getting to be able to go back to all these places. Um, I haven't gone to David's conference before, but I know of it well, um, and I, I know David really well. Um, so yeah, I've been looking forward to going to that too. Whenever whenever that thaws out, uh, that'd be something I've been, been been wanting to do. It's been on my wish list as well. So that's awesome. Yeah, but w- when you're not on so many conferences right now, I think uh, you have some contact addresses or websites which we can mention. And uh, to our listeners, you don't have to write that down uh, now, even if you're uh, driving your car or so it's a little bit dangerous. So we put it in the show notes <laughs> and put that later on in the text file yeah. next to this episode so we we can have it. Uh, D- Damien, w- where can we find you in the great world of, of the internet or personally? Uh, you can find me on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me on uh, on the Twist Aroma website, www.twistaroma.fr. Uh, Twist Aroma is uh, more or less linked to the Twister. <laughs> it's not. It was yeah. not a, a big invention. Uh, you can find me uh, also uh, using my uh, uh, mail, email, uh, damien.stayer at Twist Aroma. That effort, and um, that's it. I mean, yeah, that's sounds perfect. perfect. <laughs> that's more than enough. So <laughs> more than others have. So that's fine. Um, yeah, th- thank you very much for your deep insights about your hop and uh, yeah, t- um, aroma investigations you have done and your database. So thank you very much from my okay. side. Um, hopefully we can see us live some sometime somewhere. I'm, I'm very interested in to do uh-huh. that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yes, at this point, again, thank you. And I think we see us somewhere. You're welcome. Yes, we'll, we'll catch up with you soon. So thanks again. It's been, been wonderful talking to you and you brightened my day. Now, now I'm going to go figure out how to go <laughs> make some beer on my MPS. <laughs> Exact. Thanks, Damien. See you soon. Yep. Listen to you soon with with our next episode, which we will release soon. Thank you very much and bye bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.